the next uh, speaker will be Prashant Warrior from uh, Cure.ai. Thank you. So I'm the last presenter between us and beer, so I'll try to keep it short. Um, my name is Prashant Warrior. I am um, co-founder and CEO of Cure.ai, uh, and we are an AI. We build AI products for radiology. Uh, quickly talk about the products. Um, we um, have a chest X-ray interpretation product, which can basically um, identify normal and abnormal X-rays, um, and it can uh, detect 20 different kinds of abnormalities, including tuberculosis screening. We are doing three kinds of, uh, uh, there are three ways we are commercializing the solution. One is for tuberculosis screening. So there are about 10.4 million tuberculosis cases every year around the world, and more than 100 million x-rays taken annually. Um, so that, and a lot of these places, there are no radiologists, not even doctors to read those x-rays. And we are interpreting those x-rays instantaneously, either on the cloud or on premise, using a, um, either a, a local small, small kind of uh, server, a server this small, or on the cloud and uh, we can do it in a few seconds. So we are radically changing the tuberculosis screening protocol using this technology, and um, uh, from a commercial perspective, each scan that we process is about a dollar a scan. So we are um, able to generate that. To, I mean, till date, we have uh, our, our uh, so India, so we, are in, we started in India, so the financial year from, in India is from April to March, so April 2019 to March 2020. So this year, we'd be at a million plus run rate uh, in terms of revenue accrued, and will be uh, about 5 million plus in TCV, so total contract value. Right? So this is one use case. A second use case is uh, looking at uh, migrant screening. So if you look at a lot of uh, like Middle East or you look at Southeast Asia, even Europe, right? there are so many migrants who are coming in, and all of them go through a tuberculosis screening program. Again, those are that's not a medical test. That's not a diagnostic test. So you can actually automate a lot of those processes. And so we're doing that. We're working with a lot of these Middle Eastern countries to automate uh, the migrant screening process. <laughs> Dubai alone has about 2.1 million x-rays that they, uh, 2.1 million chest x-rays that they interpret for migrants. Abu Dhabi has another 2 million. Saudi Arabia has about 4 or 5 million. So that number is, in the Middle East alone, it's about 20 million uh, x-rays, chest x-rays that are read. And then Southeast Asia, another 20, 30 million. So again, that's a, that's a substantial market size for uh, interpreting um, chest x-rays uh, for migrant screening. And, and the third thing that we're doing is, um, what we do is we actually, differentiate between normal and abnormal chest x-rays. So a lot of times, I mean, radiologists don't want to read x-rays because, again, I mean, radiologists want to read CDs and MRs. And if you look at the reimbursements, everything is low for x-rays. So uh, in general, uh, what we have observed is globally, people don't want to read x-rays. And what we do is we would basically identify out of 100 chest x-rays, about 80 are normal and 20 would be abnormal. And if we can identify those uh, 80 abnormal x-rays, we can do that very accurately. And those normal X-rays have the same report because finally, I mean, you're you're saying that all the different parts of the lung, all the, all the different parts of the chest are normal. So we can auto-report those uh, 80 cases, and uh, so we are doing auto-reporting, auto-reported normal for a, a lot of um, hospital groups in Asia right now. Okay. This product is CE certified, um, so we have. With that, we can sell in most parts of the world outside of the U.S., um, Japan, China, um, and so on. And um, we are um, uh, getting through FDA certification right now. A second product that we have is uh, interpretation of um, head CD scans. So this is to detect trauma and stroke cases. Um, so what we do is we'll actually integrate directly with the CT scanner. And um, as soon as we see a CT scan which has a critical uh, finding, let's say a bleed um, or uh, a fracture, midline shift, mass effect, uh, or an infarct, we would actually alert the radiologist within a minute on a mobile phone. So that is the mobile phone message that goes out. It's a telegram message, very similar to WhatsApp. And uh, we'll, we'll send the details of the case, so for example, we'll say that uh, the subdural hemorrhage of 16.5 ml, this is auto-reported uh, in the uh, parietal regions, left frontal and parietal regions, and we'll show some key slices. Right? Uh, we can also pre-fill a radiology template. Uh, we're working with several partners on that. Uh, we can also, what we also do is quantify the uh, bleed volumes, and so we can measure how the patient is progressing through treatment. and. Um, we can prioritize uh, the product, prioritize the work list. So that's about it. Thank you so much. That's a lot of work. <laughs> can you talk about your funding to date and again what you're going to need going forward? So, um, we, uh, we have been funded by an organization called Fractal Analytics, uh, which is an AI and analytics services company. 
So they seed funded us, they incubated us actually, and so we have been uh, funded by them for the last uh, three and a half years. And um, so I cannot reveal exactly how much they have funded us. Right now we are almost, I mean, almost closing a 20 million round. So there is, there is a, a opportunity to participate there. So that round is led by um, a, a very significant, I mean, large um, Silicon Valley investor there, Indian Arm, and um, a Singapore-based investor also is part of that round. So that, that's something where, um, I mean, there is currently about, I mean, so we are raising between 15 to 20 million. We already have, uh, we are signing for about 16 million right now. The signing is already done. But there is an opportunity for people to uh, participate in that round if you are okay with um, the whatever terms and conditions are already agreed to. So, I mean, clearly th this solution is a, is a screening solution. Um, how does this compare to an actual clinician read in terms of false positive and false negative when you say it's at the level of accuracy? I was talking about this earlier where we have compared to radiologists and we found that this performs better than radiologists. So again, but then the point is that com performing better than radiologists does not really make a difference because you're not going to replace a radiologist right. in let's say US and in places like India or Africa, you don't have radiologists right. who are reading those. So mm -hmm. there you are actually replacing a radiologist, but you are not even replacing a radiologist, you're re re replacing maybe a technician or a doctor who's reading that scan there. Right, I guess just the point that I made. Because uh, clearly that's why I said it's a screening device, so you're yeah. not looking to replace the radiologist. But it, it depends on what the level, so if the, if the level of false positivity is relatively no, because if you get a false positive, the next step is going to be you're going to order a CT scan. Or yeah. you, so there's some cost to the level of false positivity to the system, so that's the only reason I asked the question. So I, th I mean, from an AI perspective, that's a good thing that you can actually change the false positive. So you can set it up in a way that it's very sensitive, the number of the specificity might be lower, right? So um, we have done that. I mean, so there are different use cases that we have. Somewhere it is very specific, somewhere it is very sensitive, and depending upon how the client wants to use it. 